What is up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in and welcome back to the Crypto Remora. My name's Wes, and I'm with, as always, Siri Crypto. What's up, Siri? What's up, man? How you doing? Doing good, brother. Doing good. Guys, every Thursday night, Siri and I get together for our Thursday night stream and talk everything crypto, keep you guys up to date and informed. Tonight is no exception. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, it's been a very active week, to say the least, in crypto. And uh, we're going to go over the Bitcoin price chart. Uh, talk about where we think the price is headed. Is this rally sustainable? Uh, we're going to talk about some key levels to pay attention to. And also talk about the uh, Bitcoin spot ETF and the institutions jumping on the train with BlackRock. So, uh, yeah, if that sounds good to you, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's get it. Siri, what's up, brother? Um, you know. How you doing on this lovely Thursday night? I'm doing good. I mean, I... I, you know, I was, I put it all over Twitter. I'm sure you saw my, my tweets about it. You know, I was, I did my first short ever two days ago on Bitcoin. I looked at my levels, I studied my levels. I said, okay, my liquidation level was $1,918. And <laughs> Ethereum got rejected at night. What was it? 1928. It got rejected. So by 10 bucks, if I would have giving myself 10 more dollars of wiggle room, I might not have been liquidated. I don't know if I'd be in the green right now necessarily on the short, but I definitely would still have my trade open. It was only 20 bucks that I lost. You, on the other hand, um, I think you went long, what, four days ago, and you crushed it? Yeah, it was, uh, I think we were both looking at the same levels. There was that downward sloping trend that was uh, getting hit as resistance, and I want to say it was like 18... Uh, I thought it was like 18 something, 18, 18. Um, Are you doing ETH or Bitcoin? ETH, yeah. Uh, oh. eight, I think it was 18 something. Because I remember 1828 was like around, or 1824 or 28 or something was like around that um, resistance level. And I just saw how many times it kept hitting the top of that. And we were just running out of so much room. Um, but I saw where you went to go short it, but instead it punched through that resistance. And I mean, dude, it happens, dude. Like, you know, we were on, we were in a trend, um, going down and, uh, you know, I, I decided to go long and, um, you shorted the resistance, which is, you know, normal. I mean, everybody shorts resistance, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it just kind of happened to, uh, we just had a breakout, man. It has a lot to do with, you know, stuff going on, but we'll, we'll talk about that. But yeah, um, yeah, I just kind of got lucky, man, to be honest with you. Well, you did, you did good, you, you know, and guys, we're just, we're letting you know on our journey, you know, I was in crypto for, I think, a year or so, uh, six months to a year before I had the courage and all my stuff together. Uh, to be able to get on Uniswap, I made my first swap on Uniswap on DeFi. I made my very first swap. I bought Unibright tokens in 2020. That was the first time I ever used uh, DeFi, legit DeFi, instead of just, you know, Robinhood or Crypto.com, whatever. And, um, you know, I wish that I didn't wait that long. It's like I wish I would have got in earlier. And so... I just want to I want to encourage everybody out there if you guys are watching if you guys are feeling like on the edge like you're you're scared to to go into DeFi or you're scared to go into you know leverage trading a little bit you know with 10 bucks or 20 bucks be smart don't be stupid don't put your whole bag yeah. on the line but if you're sitting on the sidelines and you're like ah I don't know I don't know how to do it I'm nervous I'm scared all the same reasons I told myself right and then once you do it, like once you get on MetaMask, once you get on Arbitrum, once you bridge that first time, once you once you go on Uniswap, use the swapper that first time, you, you get this feeling inside you like, I did it. 
you know, and you feel good, and then you're like, now you're just like, whatever. It's like taking a shower. It's not a big deal anymore. But I know getting that over that first hump, guys, I know there's somebody out there watching right now that's scared to do it. Do not be afraid to do it. Just just do it. You will thank yourself later. It's cheaper than centralized exchanges. Yeah. Um, it's permissionless. It's, I mean, I could go yeah. on and on about it, but just... Don't be scared. Just pull the trigger. If you mess up, you're only messing up with 10, 20 bucks anyway. You know, don't be stupid. Don't transfer a whole ton of money. Take, take 10, 20 bucks for your first time and just do it. And if you guys have any questions about it at all, hit us up, man. Reach out to us. We'll try to help you out in, in any way we can. And, um, but yeah, I just want to encourage you guys, you know, cause like Wes, Wes just got in. Wes is moving faster than I moved. You know, Wes is already in Discord. He's, you know, NFTs, you know, he's trading. He's trading with leverage. It's like, like, I wish I didn't stall so long in my journey. But I, I try to tell Wes everything that I had learned and try to build him up a little bit in the beginning. And now it's like Wes is cruising. So, like, you guys just, you know, don't be scared is what I'm trying to say. Don't be afraid to pull the trigger and try something new, even though it's a little intimidating. Because the rewards are definitely worth it. Once you do it. You're never going to want to go back to trading on just Robinhood or Crypto.com. You can't make any money that way. You're paying taxes every single trade, and you're paying 4 or $5 every time you swap. And it's just not it's not profitable compared to using DeFi. So that's, that's it. That's my rant. Rant over. <laughs> no, you're good, man. Um, so, so what was it about... The, the chart when you were looking at the chart and you were like all right cool man like i see the resistance there because yeah. me and you were talking about it we had that fallen wedge man that bullish falling wedge oh yeah. um and, and we were both saying like dude any day now this is gonna break out what was it that made you say i'm gonna go short so i so yeah and let me clear this up too because yeah i, I kind of look crazy on twitter because I, for the last six months i've been saying falling wedge we're gonna break out we're going to thirty three thousand. yes I still believe that, and we did break out. I've never, I've never been, uh, what do you call it, bearish in the midterm. The only reason, the only reason that I wanted to short was based off of sentiment because nah. BlackRock, Gensler, and all these people were flipping automatic bullish and saying, "Oh, mm -hmm. ETF." In the last two or three times that a Bitcoin ETF got approved, the markets got absolutely wrecked. Yeah. They got destroyed the day they got released. Now, this is the mistake I made. The mistake I made was I I, I went into this short too soon. So I still believe that they are going to short. I'm not, bull, I'm not bearish on Bitcoin at all. But I'm saying that I think when the ETF comes out, I think that BlackRock and all of these institutions are going to short the hell out of the market so that their buddies can get in cheaper. That's just that's that's just what I, I think. Am I willing to take another short on it? Yes, but I need to do more research. I made a big mistake in not studying. You know, well, I, I got anxious, man. I got anxious. I thought, okay, I, it, BlackRock's doing happens, the ETF. Yeah. They're going to short it tomorrow. And, and I jumped yeah. too soon on the short. You know, it was only 20 bucks, you know. So yeah. I was I was practicing safe so, trading, but um, if you look at the charts, I'm on the daily or the weekly for Ethereum. It literally poked its head perfectly at 1920. It only went above it one time. Wednesday the 21st, 2300 hours. It went to 1930. That was the highest it poked. My liquidation level was 1918. So I was right there, man. I uh, I called that level. The problem is, I missed it by what uh, twenty bucks. So twenty bucks, I missed my level, and look what happened. We hit our head there, and now we're sitting down at Ethereum, sitting down at you know eighteen seventy four. You know, lesson learned. I I I got excited, but the the proof is in the pudding that it, I did call the correct level ish. I was off by ten twenty bucks, but you know I'll take that. Yeah, it's not as good as what you're doing, you know, when you're actually making money on the trade. That's the best. <laughs> yeah, that's but, the goal, man. That's but I'll I'll take a close, a you know, I'll take a, a close <laughs> thing because you guys, this is still a learning process for all of us, me included. It's like that was my first short ever. I've never opened a short on Bitcoin. I never really wanted to. And uh, so, my, Mike, dude, Mike from um, 
Smalls, uh, he's from Treasure. I think Small Age, Mike, NFT. Um, he said, dude, why don't you go long instead, man? It, maybe your heart's not in it on the short. And I, I thought about it. I was like, yeah, that's probably the better way to go. So I think I'm going to long from now on. <laughs> Um, yeah, dude, I'm glad you killed it. I'm glad. I'm glad you. Uh, you yeah, I mean, dude, there. we're you know, it, it's a learning process, man. And um, I just saw that that you know, fallen wedge that we had been talking about this whole time, and um, honestly, out. wasn't even paying attention to to really anything else in the background. I just was just was just like strictly based off the chart, and uh, yeah, I mean, I I don't know, I call it luck, I guess, if you want, but. Um, we're, we're trying to learn, we're trying to position ourselves to, uh, not miss out on what we missed out in 2020 and 2021, because like literally when, when we, when we flip bullish and we start going into that bull cycle, like you're going to want to know how to trade. You're going to want to know how to long, um, and you know, 20 bucks, <laughs> 50, uh, you know, 20 bucks, you can turn that and you 50 X that, I mean, that's a lot of money they give you to play with. You just got to be careful, you know, not to get liquidated or, uh, trade with too much, man. Cause it, it's very easy to fall into that. But you know, we had that fallen wedge that we were talking about on the chart. Um, it was playing out like, what are, what are some of the levels you're looking at as of now? So we went through that fallen wedge, came up, we hit the resistance at 30.8. I think it was. Um, what levels are you watching now, man? Do you think we're gonna kind of come back and hit that uh, downward trend, that that trend line, and, and use it as support, or you think we'll fall back through it? Well, I think I think um, Bitcoin. At <clears throat> I'm a little surprised to be honest with you. I was thinking that Bitcoin, when it did break out of that wedgie, I, I told you my target price was thirty three thousand dollars. So for me. I'm still shaking my head a little bit in disbelief as to why we're not at $33,000 yet because I guess because that was my target. But at the same time, we've hit our head once, twice, three, four. We've hit our head four times on 30000 and been rejected in the last 180 days. So uh, it could be, you know, if you, if you go back on Bitcoin's charts, you can see sometimes it takes eight or nine attempts to get through a resistance level mm -hmm. so you know you if you count them you know one two three close you could say four five maybe six maybe six times we've we've started pushing above 30 or, or hitting our head on 30 and you know thirty three thousand is only one little flag away from that um i still see that level i still see a thirty three thousand dollar bitcoin and yeah, I mean, I mean that's still my target. It looks like we're still in that that wedgie broke out, but it broke out to the top of the wedge, which is not normal. You know, normally you take the flagpole from the bottom before the wedgie mm -hmm. began. You take that flagpole and you move it, you extrapolate it to the end of the falling wedge, and that'll give you the next target. If you do that, that's how you come up with that $33,000 level. And Maybe this is the correction before we zoom back up there, you know, so mm. it, it may be time to open along soon. So I'm still looking at 33,000 for the upside. Um, if we come down, I'm looking at 28.5 again, which, mm. you know, God knows we, we don't want to go back down there. I mean, you know, but it is what it is, man. These guys, the in, the big boys are getting in, and they are ruthless bastards. They are going to trade and manipulate the sh crap out of the market. So, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting learning how to day trade while the best traders in the world are coming into Bitcoin and trading it. So, yeah, it's going to make us better, man. That's the way I see it, yep. we're going to get better real quick. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking. We you know we hit that resistance at thirty point eight. Unfortunately, we weren't uh, able to break it. However, um, the indicators they're still suggesting bullish momentum. So I could I like if you know we're just having a cool off, man. I think this retracement, yeah. uh, even if we retraced back to twenty eight thousand, I mm -hmm. think that's a healthy retracement. Yeah. Um, but if we lose that twenty eight thousand, like you were just talking about, then that's when we're looking at that twenty five. If we break this thirty point eight or you know let's say 31,000 we break that 31,000 that's when i'm looking at 36 to 40,000 um 36 to 40,000 dollar levels man 
which would be uh, pretty awesome. I mean, dude, just within the last couple of days, and and we're up like twenty five percent plus just in the last couple of days. So we need a cool off. I yeah, mean, and, and, and we don't want to go up too fast. Yeah, you're totally right about that. And guys, keep in mind too, just because I opened that twenty dollar short trade. I was still buying down at 15k. So, yeah, I lost 20 bucks, but guess what? I was buying down at 15k, so I'm really not in the red as much as it's you just would think from one little trade. safe trade. Because we we yeah. saw that me and Wes both said this. We were one of the few influencers calling when Bitcoin was at 15k. We said this is it, man. You know, this is the bottom. And sure enough, we doubled. We're you know we're sitting around 30k right now. So we made the good calls. My little attempt to short trade was more of an experiment you know which i'd lost at but um i learned a lesson too i learned a lesson of not to go with sentiment over mm -hmm. the charts i should have just listened to my own gut listen to what me and wes were doing with the charts the charts well, dude, were calling like you for said it, it was but, your uh, first short i listened trade, to man. the news man and i don't trust i'm sorry i don't trust blackrock and all those guys because i know they're gonna yeah. i know the dump is coming when they're ready to dump it they're gonna dump the crap out of it so that they yeah. can get in cheaper i just i can't predict when they're gonna do that and that was a bad move on my part well don't dwell on it too much man you you know you're just practicing trading like you said it was your first That's short right. it was 20 bucks it is what it is man so um yeah let's uh let's move on man so it's crazy to think that just six months ago bitcoin was at sixteen thousand, like you were just talking about dude we're almost up a hundred percent so it is, uh, you know, we're, we're looking good, man. Uh, we're looking it's good. Beautiful. Just last week, we had the uh, bearish sentiment, like you were just talking about, with the SEC filing lawsuits against Coinbase, against Binance, Robinhood getting scared out of the markets. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're kind of backing out of all the other cryptocurrencies that they were offering, um, which I also want to know how you feel about that. But everyone is scrambling right now to get their hands on the 21 million Bitcoin. And BlackRock is the largest investment company in the world. Uh, and other institutional players, they see this and they know this. So they're going to do what the cool kids are doing, right? They want to do what BlackRock is doing. Um, Grayscale and a few others, they've applied to, to have this uh, spot ETF. But BlackRock is the big dog. So, you know, they have a high reputation. Um, they're, they're in good with the regulators. They've been around for a long time. So a lot of people are speculating because of that, that we'll get the approval for this, for this, uh, spot ETF, Fidelity, Valkyrie, Wisdom Tree. They're all following in the footsteps of BlackRock. So what is, do you, do you think they're going to get the approval? What do you see this process playing out? How do you see it playing out? Well, it's, it's, I, there, look, when it comes to BlackRock, they, I know that technically there's, they're waiting for a quote-unquote approval, but BlackRock is the approval. Like right. $20 trillion in assets, BlackRock is the ones that make the approval. So what, mm -hmm. what I think is going to happen is the same thing why I took my short is not because I'm bearish on Bitcoin. I am very bullish on Bitcoin, but in being bullish on Bitcoin, I'm also being a realist and I'm... I'm I just know how these guys play, and they play very dirty. And that's why I'm saying to be cautious. But but here's the thing. It'll be like Christmas morning because if they, you know, let's say they get approved. I'm going to just, you know, let's pretend they're getting approved, you know, whatever. They're the ones who really call the shots. But let's say they get approved, which they will. Um, who knows? when that day is going to be and when it's going to happen and when they might short it. I'm not saying it's guaranteed they're going to short it, but I just have a feeling that they're going to short it. And who knows, man, what if they do it before they get approved? Like, in other words, what if we get hit with something else? Like they come out and say, oh, Gensler refuses all the ETFs. You know, if that happens and we go back down to 25, just know that if that happens – then what I'm saying is true, and that is their that is their play, and that's their short. In other in other words, they're gonna say they're gonna pull a doki oak and be like, oh, they're not approving it. Drop us down to 25. They'll come in and scoop plenty up because the insiders will know that it's BS and that they will approve it. And then all of a sudden, they'll scoop up some more, and then they'll say, okay, it's approved. You know. So 
that's that's all I'm saying is I'm just being very careful because I know how they manip manipulate markets with stocks, and um, they've done it for 200 years and they're the best at it. So why would they change their game now just because it's crypto? They don't care. They don't care that yeah. it's crypto versus a stock. They, you know, this is what they do. These guys wake up in the morning, and you know, fake people out. I mean, I watched that video of uh, somebody and said Soros. What did Soros do when he wanted to short copper? He went out and sold a bunch of copper and then ran his mouth about how bad it was. And then everybody started selling the copper um, on the market. They dumped the price of copper down, and he came in and bought it all up. So, yep. you know, that's legal. That's not an illegal thing to do. So, likewise, yep. if they're if they're saying, oh, the ETF's getting, you know, not approved – you know what's that going to do? What is that going to do to sentiment and the price of Bitcoin? If they come out and say that it's not getting approved, that's gonna that's gonna have a negative effect most likely. So yeah, it's pretty common. I, I just think that we got to be careful. Like we have to be bullish on on Bitcoin, but we have to be realistic on the side that the stock players are getting in, and that that's yeah. that's how I'm playing this right now. But I'm not gonna so, I'm not gonna bet the farm and go bearish on Bitcoin over it. I'm just yeah. being cautious. That's all. So as a trader taking swing trades or, or mm -hmm. trying to snipe snipe a trade, I mean, yeah, you, that's something you kind of pay attention to. But as far as long term, man, oh, like, long term, dude, we're accumulating. I, the game is not changing. Yeah, that, like no. long term. Even through all this crap, yeah, exactly. Thank you for saying that, because that—that's what I mean yeah. to say is, long term, I'm still accumulating. Like I have my long term bags, and then I have my little little tiny trading section where I take ten bucks here, ten bucks there, and that's all I'm playing yeah. with, guys. I'm not playing with no more than that. My trades are always going to be small trades like that. Well, yeah, I will say though, man, like I think that during the bull, and this isn't financial advice. This is just me being a degen, but. I think during the bull run, man, like this is, I feel like this is our, this is our bull, man. Like we got to make this bull ours, dude. Like oh, yeah. when, when that bull run comes, dude, like I'm not going to do no little $20 trades, bro. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to make that. <laughs> I'm it. trying to make it. I'm trying get to it, get it, bro. Get I'm it. trying to get it, bro. Like <laughs> I hear you. I want, you know what I'm saying? No, dude? I so, hear you. I'm going to do the two. Look, when the bull, yeah, when the man. bull's full on, like we're almost there. We're almost yeah. there, but I, I'm not quite. I don't need not to go there, to 69k yeah. to be right. bull is on 100. percent But right. we need to crack that 50k level because that's a psychological yeah. level. So for that's everybody. that's the level you're looking at when when we crack that 50k level. That's the level you're seeing that you say, all right, hands down, yeah. bull runs on. Let's get it. Yeah, for the psychological. Uh, you know, Gene Simmons saying, oh, well, I see $50,000 Bitcoin end of year. I can't tell you how much that pissed yeah. me off that he was right about that. Bro, and you know what's crazy, dude, is like, I was like, there's no way. That's dude. what I said. At there's the no time, way. And sure at the enough, time, we, dude, we were like at 60000 and And like, we, we were still talking about going on our way to 100000 And we're like, shut up, Gene. Like, go back to your little stocks or whatever. And then damn sure enough, dude. Yeah, he, he nailed that. End shit. of the year came, and we were at 50K, bro. Out of all the people in the world, Gene Simmons. Gene called Simmons. For Bitcoin. I got to give him credit, you know. And I am a Kiss fan, so I'm not hating on him. Oh, yeah, dude. Me too. I'm a, like... I'm a Kiss fan. But it just, it like you said, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way seeing him say that. I was like, how dare you say Bitcoin's going to 50K, you know. <laughs> I was offended by it. I'm like, come right. on, man. Yeah, it was offensive, Gene. <laughs> so, yeah, dude, my, my, my stepbrother's like a huge Kiss fan, man. Like, he used to, uh, he used to, like, dress up like him. And, man, it's crazy. But, yeah, yeah no, no, I like I like Kiss. Anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah, very offensive, though, Gene. Keep that to yourself, buddy. So, what, <clears throat> what, what do you... Uh, you know, we only got a couple more minutes left, but, you know, just real quick, I don't want to give Gensler too much of the stage anymore, but it looks like he's getting his uh, his little butt handed to him at this point. It's like, yeah. how do you feel about that? Do you think that his little, um, his little run is about up? I think so, man. I think he's about to get the boot. You know, I think he's uh, he's got too many people, too many senators, and the, the committee is just on him, dude. Like... They see what he's doing, man. He's like, he's trying to, you know, run crypto, this whole sector, like, like it belongs to him already, dude. And it doesn't, man. Like, 
somebody should be like there should be a committee over him with a new uh sector like like crypto man and um dude he, he's just running rampant with it like it's insane dude what what he's getting away with uh and i think that a lot of people are seeing that and yeah dude, his time is about to be up he's done yeah, if you if you uh go into the google search bar and type in btc etf you type in bitcoin etf uh there is nine etfs showing and 10 more that google wants to show you i'm going to read these off pro short pro shares bitcoin strategy van mm -hmm. eck bitcoin strategy purpose bitcoin etf grayscale bitcoin trust global x blockchain bitwise crypto industry valcry bitcoin strategy pro share short bitcoin global x blockchain etf so wow uh yeah it's pretty bullish. so there's been a lot more dude <laughs> it's, it's what coming. about fidelity fidelity didn't put in oh yeah fidelity, fidelity. Uh, there's a ton dude they're all they're all yeah on it. well the last one that i heard today was uh wisdom tree and wisdom valkyrie tree. that's it valkyrie yeah. Those and are uh, huge. valkyrie Valkyrie's so that much man dude that must mean that uh that a lot more have also put in and that's what's got me thinking dude like why would all these other ones be running after BlackRock kind of, you know, when BlackRock put in their application for it? That's it, man. It's a wrap. Look at that, dude. Like, I mean, I don't know, dude. I think it's at that point, all these other institutions are putting in for it because I think they feel like they know BlackRock is going to get approved. Yeah. So they're just trying to stay. They're trying to be Remora, dude. They're trying to swim yep. with the whale, bro. <laughs> exactly. Good call, man. Good call. Yeah, they're trying That's to be exactly Remora. That's exactly what they're doing. They're saying, wait a minute, Daddy's making a move? It's oh, like we need to ride. Like Andrew Saunders is doing something. It's like you better pay attention. What's Andrew doing? Right? Yeah, all right. It's let's the ride. same thing with BlackRock. Not, not saying yeah. that Andrew's on that side of the fence, but... Yeah, you know, no, but you know, BlackRock's making a move. Exactly, all these other guys are mm -hmm. like, okay, let's let's go. The bull let's is go. back. Yeah. So yeah, it's so exciting, is the man. is the bull back? That's that's the final question. Is the bull back, Sierra? Is the bull back? Is the bull back? I, I know it's a little clickbaity title. What we did. In my opinion, fifteen k was and still is the very bottom mm -hmm. of the bear. So the bear technically is over. So if you want to get technical, yes, the bull has been back since 15K. We've okay. doubled. We're at 30K. Do I think we have a bumpy road ahead? Absolutely. We got 2024 elections coming up. We got World War III on the brink. We got religious problems. We got freaking spiritual problems. We got left versus <laughs> right. We got all kinds of stuff, right? But is the bull back? I say yes. I say the bull has been back since 15K. That was the switch. Technically speaking, we are in the bull, but we're in the very, very beginning stages of it. And, uh, you know, just be careful. But I would say that technically speaking, the bull is back. I'm not going to yeah. say it's not. I, I would definitely Almost like, say it's back. Yeah, like we're in that denial stage of, um, of the cycle, man, where, you know, uh, people are just, you know, we, we go up 100% and people are like, nah, dude, we're, we're going to come back down in a minute. And the next thing you know, boom, we're at, you know, 60,000. Yeah, 60, 000 and, yeah uh, I, I mean, dude, I don't even see 25K being all that realistic of come, like, oh, we're going to just gradually come back down to 25K. I think you got to see some serious stuff happen to even get that, excuse me, that 25K yeah. again. I think you got to see, like, Gensler come back out tap dancing on stage to you know make yeah. something happen to <laughs> go down to 25k so well yeah dude we've built we've built a lot of support at 25k man so yes. i feel comfortable about that 25k level next you know next uh bear cycle i, I 25k is uh we're solid dude we're we've built a lot of support at 25k so yeah man yeah man i think that's about it we're at 28 minutes now so we're yeah, man, we hit, we're a little over, so yeah. But yeah, uh, great episode, man. Uh, like always, dude. I love these Thursday night um, episodes, these meetings that we, uh, you know, started putting on video for you guys to to kind of watch and see what we talk about. And uh, yeah, look forward to doing more. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for listening to us rant and talk and have fun. And uh, we hope to see you here again. Much love to the Arbonauts. And until next time, peace out. Mm -hmm.